Welcome to Know Your Universe. This is the series right here at Comic Storian where we give you information on some of the characters and properties and concepts within comic books that you may find challenging or just interesting. We kind of compile all the information that we can find on the internet and give you that information so that you can work with it and understand your favorite stuff within comic books even better. Recently, they announced that they are working on a Silk movie. Now, you're probably going, why are they going to make a movie about Silk? It's a cloth. It's not important. Is it about how silk came to be? Is it about silkworms and how we just grab all that silk out of their butts and make more silk cloth? Is it why it's so expensive? And I would go, really? Are you really asking me these questions? It's, it's Silk the Superhero, the Asian American character that was created by Dan Slott to be put into the Spider-Man movie. Well, not movie, the comics. You know, Dan Slott made her. Anyway, that's what we're talking about today. Here's the information that you need for Silk, a Know Your Universe. Now, just so you know, Silk does not have a long and extensive history. She's only been around since the original Sin series. So we're gonna let you know a little bit of information as to her beginnings and her middle road and her solo story so that you may want to explore her yourself, but there isn't that much to work with on this character. Now, Dan Slott has stated in interviews that when he first started writing Spider-Man in 2008, he wanted to bring more Asian American characters to the world. He is quoted as stating that in 50 years plus of Spider-Man comics, one of the things that stood out to him is that there has never really been a single prominent Asian American character in the cast. He was speaking of Sha Sheng Nujin, a on and off again girlfriend of Flash Thompson, who would very rarely appear in the storylines. Slot first introduced Martin Lee, a crime lord, followed by Yuri Watanabe, a police officer and vigilante, and finally a woman named Cindy Moon. Cindy Moon, the character that would become known as Silk, first cameoed in Amazing Spider-Man number one in 2014. She would then go on to star in her own series after Marvel received overwhelming fan support of the character, as stated by Dan Slott in several interviews when he was trying to silence some of the backlash against her character on the internet. Making her full debut in Amazing Spider-Man number four, we learned about her origins and powers. And on the fateful day when young Peter Parker was on a school trip to visit a demonstration on the use of radioactive rays at a science exhibit, a spider is exposed to radiation. That creature then bites young Peter Parker, giving him superpowers and allowing him to become Spider-Man. What Peter didn't realize, however, is that he is not the only one that was bitten that day. Moments after his bite, one of his classmates, a young Korean American girl named Cindy Moon, was also bitten. Cindy was born with a photographic memory, which is the ability to vividly recall images from memory. Because of this, her mother wanted her to focus more on her studies and forced her to go on a school trip to that science exhibit. After Cindy was bitten, she, like Peter, developed amazing and somewhat different powers. She was able to create organic webbing and has a stronger spider sense and is faster than Peter Parker, our friendly neighborhood web slinger. She is, however, notably weaker than Spider-Man. Unlike Peter, she can't seem to control her powers in the beginning. The first time her webbing manifests itself, she accidentally webs her parents up. Eventually, a man named Ezekiel Sims approaches Cindy, offering to train her in the use of her abilities. After several years, she did learn to control her new powers, and that was when she was locked away by Ezekiel to protect her from an entity known as Morlun and his family of the Inhibitors. Now, during the original Sin event, Spider-Man is exposed to the strange energies of the Watcher Yuata's eye. This allowed him to see the events of the day that he was bitten, and he learned of the existence of Cindy Moon. Going in a search for this woman, he locates Ezekiel's bunker, and he frees her but instead of being grateful, she attacks him, claiming that he has doomed them all. Peter calms her by explaining that Morlun is already dead, technically twice at this point, but you just can't keep a good villain down. Making her way out of the bunker for the first time in 10 years, Cindy makes herself a costume out of webbing and swings off to see New York. Returning to her old home, she's saddened to find that her family has moved away. When she finds out that Morlun has already died and come back to life once before, she attacks Peter in a fit of rage. The two discover that for some reason, they have a shared spider sense and pheromones causing them to have a strong attraction to each other. Instead of fighting, they kiss and they make their way back to Peter's apartment to uh, get to know each other better over a cup of coffee. But then they're interrupted by Peter's roommate, Anne Marie. That's all I'm gonna say about what happened there. As Cindy learns more about the world that she's been away from for so long, she adopts the costumed identity of Silk and gets a job at the news organization known as Fact Channel, run by the ever-friendly J. Jonah Jameson, with the intent of using its resources to find out about her family. Now, during the Spider-Verse event, Peter and Cindy try to come up with a solution to the problem of every time that they're close to one another, they want to, uh, get closer. Honestly, it doesn't sound like a problem to me. I really like coffee. Going to get coffee frequently with my best friend or person who's constantly attracted to me, that sounds like it'd be great. 
Anyway, in the event, Cindy was one of the three key totems, known as the Bride, along with Benji Parker from MC2 and Kane. Silk works with the other spider heroes from across the multiverse to stop the inhibitors, and is essential in allowing the team to stop the overall threat of Mordlun and his army. In the end, Silk then returns to Earth-616 with Peter and Jessica Drew, aka Spider-Woman. After the events of Spider-Verse, Cindy then continues her new life of fighting crime, engaging in combat with a very Pokemon-sounding villain known as Dragon Claw and the somewhat villainous Black Cat, while also working at the Fact Channel and searching for her lost family. Moving from her apartment, she decides that she's going to set up a base of operations from the bunker where she's been held all of those years ago. Unknown to her, however, whenever she's in the bunker, she's being watched by two shadowy figures. Since they have been close in the past, Peter becomes worried about Cindy, feeling that she is unwell. He asks her to go to the Fantastic Four so that they can check on her, and she begrudgingly agrees. While she's physically fine, it's revealed that she suffers from anxiety and is referred to a therapist. Also, much to Peter's irritation, she goes on a date with the Human Torch, Johnny Storm, which is totally not cool, because I'm pretty sure there's a rule about going out with a friend's ex. And never mind the fact, if Cindy's now hanging out with Johnny and they start getting coffee, how is Peter going to go get coffee? And whose best friend is Cindy? I, it's... I don't know, it's like a triple triangle of like melodrama. I feel like this is something that should go on the CW channel. Anyway, while she has a few more run-ins of Dragon Claw and Black Cat, Cindy is also searching for her family. She takes a job directly under Jameson, hoping that it'll work, and the old grump starts to warm up to her when she suggests that they start taking photos of Silk, and much like Peter did back in the day with Spider-Man, she's able to get better photos of Silk. While looking at her computer one day, Jameson realizes that Cindy is looking for her family. Cindy goes on to tell him everything about her past. This trust makes Jameson and want to help her, and this all happens because of the last day's storyline in Secret Wars. As the final incursions between Earth-616 and Earth-1610 begin to happen, Jameson gives Silk a case file for someone that appears to be her long-lost brother. Quickly running out of time, she finds the young man in the hospital, and then as the world ends around them, Cindy quietly tells her brother, I'm sorry for everything, and I love you. Albert, I love you. And then fade to white. Fade to black's where you would end thing. Fade to white's apparently when two worlds crash into each other, ending everything. Thankfully, after the events of Secret Wars, the world was set anew. As it always is, guys, this is comics. And everyone has had a, a handy amount of amnesia about the events that happened during Secret Wars. For the record, I don't even think Cindy Moon showed up in that whole entire thing. Anyway, in the all new, all different Marvel branding, it's been eight months since that event and Cindy is still looking for her parents, but she has managed to get her life back together, even getting a promotion at the Fact Channel. As Silk, she's been staking out members of the Goblin Nation after her brother was infected with a Goblin formula and made him lose all of his memories as to what happened to their parents. She also appears to now be working with the Black Cat Criminal Organization Gang. I don't think that's the official name. If it was, she's really bad at branding. They're all gonna know who's in charge. Anyway, Cindy is currently stealing technology for Black Cat, and it's revealed that she is actually working undercover for S.H.I.E.L.D., who has promised to help her search for her parents. During the Spider Women event, a powerless Cindy Moon travels to Earth-65, home of the one and only Spider Gwen, with the goal of stealing and reversing engineering technology from the greatest minds in the multiverse for war profiteering. While teaming up with Spider Gwen and eventually stopping the evil Cindy Moon, Silk's reputation is destroyed as everyone believes that she and Evil Cindy are the same person. Even her shield handlers believed that she had turned supervillain. The evil actions of Earth-65 Cindy had the same effect on Black Cat, who now believed that Silk had become more of a supervillain than she already was. This causes Black Cat to free Silk from a shield prison convoy and bring her deeper into the criminal organization. Now, after that, I think we're gonna dub it, you know, the Kitty Cat criminal organization. That way, no one will guess Black Cat's in charge of it. Anyway, now that she has more Black Cat's trust, Silk decided to continue her undercover mission, with the end goal being gaining more intelligence to give S.H.I.E.L.D. that would help her find her parents. Eventually, Silk would go on to regain her good name and find her parents, who had journeyed into the negative zone to find a cure for her powers. Eventually, she would then quit her job with the Fact Channel and accept an offer to attend S.H.I.E.L.D. Academy, and other than a couple of minor crossovers, that's all we really have on Silk at this point. She's kind of mostly vanished until somebody else decides to write stories about her. Maybe Dan Slott will write more stories about the character that he created. I don't know. I always liked the character of Silk. I thought she was interesting. The biggest issue, and you probably saw this the moment I started explaining her, is she is like one of like 20 spider women. We had her talking to two of them in this rundown. Jessica Drew and Spider-Gwen. So I think while Silk's a fun character and she has an interesting take on the Spider-Man powers, 
Wars, you have to question yourself. How does she stand out from the other spider people? Because I don't think she does. And that's the biggest issue. I think the biggest thing that everyone even showed about her was her original costume was made out of her own webbing. So there's like a whole scene where her webbing dissolves and she has no costume underneath. That's the only meme thing I've ever seen about Silk. But I'll see Spider Gwen everywhere and I'll see Spider Woman everywhere. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the return of Know Your Universe with San Diego Comic-Con coming up. You're gonna see a lot more Know Your Universe happening. This is coming out after San Diego Comic-Con, but once San Diego Comic-Con happens, we'll be writing a lot more Know Your Universe. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time right here. I'm Benny. I work here right here at Comic Storian. I also sometimes called the Comic Storian. There's other people here. We're a family. Big old happy family here. I'll see you guys next time.